November 23rd, 2021 at 7.03 p.m. Uh, before we get started, um, Catherine, could you lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Um, Carrie, could you do the roll call? Of course. All right. Cynthia Clare. Here. Marissa Brown. Here, Julie Hammond. Here. Julie Kitschak. Michael Mascola. Here. Todd McCormick. Here. Sean O'Neill. Here. Sue Sherman. Here. Mark Sherwood. Here. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, now, could I get a motion from the floor to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion. And, and I'll second, second it. Michael seconds. All right. We'll move that to discussion. And please look them over. Um, I think Mark would already noticed one thing. Um, Carrie, in the roll call taken by you, you have Mark Sherwood as present and also not in attendance. Oh, and you have me as absent, and I was here. You were here during roll call. True. Did you list when <laughs> I came in then? When I came in? I can add that. You should. I I'm sorry. Sure you should. I do that. Well, so I came in. I can probably tell you where. I came in right after Chris, when Chris was doing the... Administrative report? No, no, the special ed student services report. So okay. right at line 12, let's go with air. Okay. Loving the numbers, by the way. Carrie, Whatever time that was in the... Because then it shows me speaking. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I know I'm good, but uh, the other thing too is on the um, present. I'm, I'm present and not in attendance as well. I was not present. He wasn't so, here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we're gonna correct. Taking those two names and putting them where they really belong and fixing my attendance arriving after Chris started his report. Everybody else was here. Mm -hmm. While I right. Go ahead. While I appreciate the minutes um, being um, um, almost as if we're recording everybody's comment. It's not really necessary that the minutes say, you know, Julian Kiska said the reason I ask is because the buses are and then quote quote what he, but more and at more of the action that we took. Um, this is almost like you're being a stenographer in the court. And it's not necessary that the minutes reflect it like that. So you don't okay. like that there's too much detail? I don't think we need to say you know, Julia and Kiska said, I'm on the page 3 of 10. The reason I ask buses are a huge expense of bus riding around the Houston. That is what he said. That's a quote. But you, you open up a door of then getting every single quote that people made g correct down to the... So are you going back and looking at the video, Carrie, to, to get these minutes like that? No, they're talking. So you, I, it's not necessary. I'm sorry. Okay. Parliamentary procedures, you do not have to have the minutes like that. I don't know if Mike Muscola or Sean would agree, but. I, I would tend to agree that while these notes are fantastic, they don't need to be so detailed. So we can make your, your job easier cool. just by, I think, summarizing. Because if there's ever uh, any real conflict with today's technology, you just go back. As a matter of fact, if you want, you can actually stick timestamps in there instead. Yeah. So, like, if we go into discussing uh, a curriculum program, just put 720 curriculum. So, anybody who wants to go look at the meeting online, they know exactly where to go. Yeah. Is that what the school board's doing now? Yes, sir. They believe They've it done that for a long while, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. It, it, just, it just gets you down a, I think, a narrow a rabbit path. Hole. Yeah, of 
Well, I didn't say that. Da, 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 da. But and your efforts are very good. An Thank you. Yeah. We're just trying to make it simpler for you. I appreciate action, it. I see all we're learning, so I appreciate the comments mm -hmm. and yeah. I appreciate the help. I also know that Julian realize. had oh, last time he had out. an issue because we didn't cite what he had said right. exactly yeah. how he said That's it. That's so. okay. Uh, if mm -hmm. if a if a particular member says I want in the record yeah. that I said during Chris Kellen's report, la 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 la, we as a board could add that in. Right. Okay. Like Sue so, wanting to have when she arrives. That's, That's right. That's totally fine. But I, I'm telling you. Because then Who's Julian can say, I didn't really say that that way. So okay. the ten are not the specifics. General. That way we close the door. If I disagree with Julian and I wasn't quoted, that could. That's correct. Okay. And then Mark said, da 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 da. Well, Mark's, Mark's quote's not in here. Okay. We. So if you can make sure that if you want something specifically in the minutes, you let mm -hmm. us know specifically, then that will be yeah. easier for Carrie. Sharing. If not, she will just take general notes. During discussion. Yeah. That's right. Actions, okay. motions, votes. So as far as these minutes, the only changes, unless anyone has anything else, is correcting the um, roll call. Mm -hmm. And putting yeah. when Sue came and in. And putting in when Sue yep. arrived. Does anybody else have anything else? All right. Uh, Christy, could you withdraw your motion and Michael your second and make a motion to accept the minutes as... Um, Amended. As amended. Thank I'll you. withdraw my second. Oh. So I withdraw my first motion. Never mind. And I will make one. a new motion to approve the minutes with the changes. And I'll second that. Okay. Can we get a vote? What do we do? All in favor? <laughs> they took out John. They put out Sue. Small right. stuff like that. Nose? Six. That's Same. John and Mark. Yeah, to mess you up, I voted twice that time. It really should be abstained. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on your toes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Maria, any correspondence? Nothing. No, that I have. Uh, no delegates and individuals. Um, <coughs> Chris. Yes. If you wouldn't mind, we'd love an administrative report. Sure thing. I'm happy to report that Atkinson in Danville Elementary Schools, Atkinson Academy in Danville Elementary School, have begun their Lego League. Uh, the Lego League is something that's supported by the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. We're grateful for that. And it's really the uh, precursor for beginning students into robotics. So uh, they use a lot of computerized uh, Legos, applications, programs, it's really cool. I've, I've seen some of it in action. It's amazing some of the things that they're able to do. Um, and it gives younger students the opportunity to start to begin, you know, exploring their interests in robotics. So we're grateful for that. Um, the Timberlane Owls football team, New Hampshire State Division II mm -hmm. champions. They very well big game. That. Very good. One, huh? Very tight game, very competitive. It was a nail biter right up until the end for sure. Um, you know, a big shout out to those coaches who have done a tremendous job, the cheerleaders, the band supported throughout the season by the cheerleaders and the band, a great number of fans. We were trying to figure out about how many folks come to those games. I'm guessing around a, a thousand might be a, an approximate, you know, an average that might be going so it's a real great community event and from them to go from two years ago of zero and nine to going 12 and 0 and being division two state champions it's well deserved um, by all of the folks the you know great support from the school as i said the coaches have just done a tremendous job and those those boys have worked incredibly hard so well deserved victory for them nice nice drone footage dean yes uh, that, yeah, that was fun that was with amazing. a little yeah drones um, at the PAC next week on December 1st, I believe that's Wednesday, I better know because I have to see my daughter perform, and the uh, Jack and Ro Rock Ensemble concert next Wednesday night, and that kicks off a series of concerts moving right through. Um, I know also they are looking for the Timberlane Community Band is looking for tuba. <coughs> Players, if anybody happens to be a tuba player, they're looking for a tuba ensemble and concert. And 
uh, just as cool as the New Hampshire State um, Division II football championship, uh, we had the opportunity to go over to Pollard Elementary School this past week, and Charlotte Cotty, who is a fifth grade student in Mrs. Robichaud's class, won the New Hampshire Kid Governor. So she will be the New Hampshire Kid Governor for the 2022 year. And um, she'll be going up to the State House with her class. Um, there will be an award ceremony, of course. And she won this award based on a platform of helping New Hampshire homeless. And so she has a, a great video that you can find online under New Hampshire Kid Governor and where she speaks to some of the activities that she'd like to embark upon to um, help to support people who in New Hampshire who are, in New Hampshire who have experienced homelessness. That's awesome. Really cool stuff. What grade is it? Fifth, Fifth grade. grade. Very wow. impressive. It was a great award ceremony over at Pollard last week. I think that'll do it for tonight. And other than I know I speak for everyone in the Timberlane education community to I uh, wish everybody here, as well as out there watching, a happy Thanksgiving, uh, a safe and healthy long weekend, hopefully enjoying some time with friends and family. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Chris. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll go to reports of committees. Um, Sue, has there been a CIP meeting since uh, our last meeting? No, not since we last met. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and... We'll move on. I don't think we have any other. Uh, Mark, the um, the thing that you were um, involved with, or was has there been any other meetings for that, or is that there have not. okay? All right. Moving on, uh, Mr. O'Neill. Any uh, updates from the school board perspective? No. Uh, we were gonna. All right. This is gonna be the first iteration of, uh, of the budget that's gonna come on out. Okay. So. I guess I'll have to wait and find out what the school board thinks. Uh, all right, unfinished business. I don't think we have any. So without further ado, um, Maria, let's <clears throat> discuss the proposed budget. Okay, so the proposed budget overall is a 0.03% uh, increase over the 2022 voted, revised voted budget, I should say, because... It includes the $991,000 that we received um, at the beginning of October. So it's a $225,000 increase. Uh, as you know, there are many pieces that play into <coughs> the budget. I created a summary, if you've seen the, the little summary that has a list. The first line is a decrease of $176,000 in salaries that is due to couple of things. First of all, these 27 retirements that we had last year. In June, 20, 27 employees retired. Some of them were long-term employees, so their compensation was significantly high. Um, we also had uh, the positions that were uh, if they were which they were part of your um, budget. We just simply put they were, the amount was decreased. We just took the position itself, but the amount was exactly the same. It was a $15,000 difference. Um, we also have um, the fact that we have five uh, unions in, on their negotiation, so we don't have increase for five of our unions reflected in this budget because they will be in separate warrant articles. Those are the TTA, our Teachers Association uh, Union, uh, and the four Teamsters unions, which are admin, admin assistants and maintenance, cafeteria workers, custodians, and administrators. So those five unions are currently under negotiation, and they will be part of the warrant. Uh, the benefit increase is $528,000. That is because some decrease in FICAN retirement for the, for the decrease in salaries. And we have a $655,000 increase for our health uh, insurance. Health Trust came with our with the GMR, the Guarantee Maximum Rate for this year, and that is at 6.2%. How much? 6.2. So the 6.2% of that is $655,000. He's 
historically, they come back at the beginning of the year and they give us a, 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 a true rate. Historically, it has been low. But this year, as we all know, with COVID, health insurance have been through the roof. So we are expecting, hopefully, a decrease on that, but we don't know. So that's why benefits are high significantly. Um, then we have $257,000 in special education and student services. As you know, like Chris said last week, we have those two combined. Uh, I think Chris and Kelly are working in to separate those two and make it more a more clear definition. But it <coughs> right now is combined there to $260,000 over. And that is due to student needs, different needs, uh, I think we're we're leaning towards more contracting services rather than sending kids out. So that's what that increase is. Uh, the total student transportation increase for the district is 92,590. That's a contractual increase. We have uh, our contract with the with the busing companies. Uh, utilities increase. So as we all are aware, and we've probably seen it at home, utilities are increasing the rates are increasing uh we don't know where what is going to happen this is the 2023 budget so it's a little early to anticipate what is going to happen um although we're doing some initiatives to to have a decrease in our utilities i thought it was prudent to put a 10 percent increase for our utilities not knowing what is going to happen so that's what it is. If you guys want to modify it, of course, I will do whatever you, you task me to do, but I just thought a 10% increase was a prudent uh, increase. Um, <clears throat> the facilities increase that you see here is uh, $250,000. $150,000 of that is uh, repairs and maintenance that, as we have discussed and as you hear in, in Carl's presentation, we are in desperate need of some repairs that need to happen. Uh, it's also $65,000 for water filters that we're required to install because of the new levels that the state impose on us for arsenic. And <clears throat> there is also a $35,000 increase for for grounds and, and parking maintenance. So that is what that $250,000 is. Then we have uh, equipment increase is a little bit in every department needs that we have here and there. It also includes uh, the server upgrades that Ken talk, spoke about for in his presentation. It also have uh, has a contingency for the for the student information system replacement that we're not sure that we're going to proceed with it. But he put, he did put a contingency as he informed you in his budget. It has also <clears throat> an increase for school dude, our uh, facility system, which we are looking to put uh, the, the manager, the schedule manager, which allows all of our buildings to be in one platform to schedule all of the events. All of our buildings have a lot of traffic for extracurricular activities, sports, and right now it's a paper process which is not very effective. So we're looking to incorporate that module into the school loop in order to make that process more productive. Um, <clears throat> we also have miscellaneous expenses. I mean, that's a catch-on category. And then I'm backing out the $991,000 of the additional adequacy aid that we received in October. So that is a total of $225,000 increase for the proposed budget. Real fast question if you're able to address it. If not, no worries at all. The, the state changed the permissible levels of arsenic that we could have in the water. Mm -hmm. So that's requiring uh, a different filtration system than we'll have. Can you speak on that at all? Or? So my understand, and I cannot speak the okay. technical aspect, but my understanding is <clears throat> the system changed the, the acceptable levels for arsenic. So some we, we are required to water testing every month. Yep. Yep. So as they have come, and we are not in compliance, we have been replacing the system. So this year we already replaced two. It was the high school and the middle school. And now two more of our schools are, in co are not in compliance. Okay. Okay. 
So and a water filter system is thirty twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars. So okay. yeah, Kyle spoke of that um, mm -hmm. at our meeting. Maybe it's in the minutes. Um, but um, spoke that they had lowered the parts per million. So every time it it affects how much right. you test. Right. Whether the well, let's say the well in Sandown passed when it was this much no, parts no per million, and right. now it's not compliant. Well, so you got to, well, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm, I'm using I'm your kidding. town. I could use plaster if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, Perfect. Yeah, that's when the cost of those filters are expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What I find interesting, if I could, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, absolutely. A former chairman of this budget committee used to say at the public hearing when she was chair, often, we only control a very small amount of the budget, the benefits and salaries, and that's why we talked about a pie chart or a, some kind of a chart or graph for to make it very visual, um, that we don't control what health trust decides to do. We, aren't con we can't control the lights and heat, and we got to pay that bill. We've got contracts with busing or waste management or... So the little, it's really a small section of the pie. It's a small slice of the pie that we get to manage or squeeze, or I hope not squeeze, but um, um, look at in sincere ways. Um, student needs are our major concern. So of course that seeing the student services up higher, Chris was very clear about how many kids we outsource. It's a big increase when you said that number the other that night compared to I went back to my minutes when I was chair of the school board <laughs> when I left compared to right now it's startling it's almost three times more kids that's a very expensive and I'm sorry we have kids in those kind of needs but we have to support them <coughs> so um, I appreciate the, the, the pie chart because I think it's very graphic. <clears throat> also, if you see in the back side of the pie oh, I like chart, one, yeah. I have the operating, so it's the green portion of the chart, only the operating expenses by category. I mean, obviously, these are broad categories because I have to lump them up somehow. But, uh, <clears throat> but I did it, spell it out that those are the components of that green operating budget. <clears throat> so without Warren articles, which are the school board's responsibility with negotiations and whatever else they may decide that they would like to, and that would be an excellent discussion to have with their, what the school board's thinking about, to put other than contracts, if you could come to some agreements with those unions, um, this is a really small increase over the operating budget we have this year what those those contracts are going to be adding to our tax burden is the uh, CIP year one included in the facilities operations no no just kind of across the board well some of those issues in the in the CIP are going to be we're trying to get them addressed by the most of it is boilers and HVAC systems and we're trying to address them with the performance contract. Right. So at this point <coughs> most of year 1 CIP is not in this 75. No. It's not. <coughs> Point 3. Okay. Because that yeah, that year 1 is what the final CIP was I mean we did Oh, I know. It's huge, right? was $4 million, yeah. mm -hmm. and that includes technology, so if you added up those two numbers, but um, technology is quite a small amount compared to facilities. Yeah, because we have needs. The previous day, back the HVAC and the boilers. So, <coughs> so if you look at uh, page three, before getting to the detail, oh wait, that's revenue, sorry. Uh, my question for you, Maria, is are we calling the 991-393 voted because technically it was voted in that special meeting? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is part now of our voted budget. 
So the voted and budget is 75, 398, 154. And that, uh, as you see, it has an asterisk because it does not include the $250,000 for capital reserve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so is that plus the 250 for capital reserve if we have enough to make it happen? Which we all the returns have expect to have if that budget also increases as well. Yes. As we increase yeah. the budget. Yeah. So the budget increased by a million plus the two fifty five or two twenty five. Yes. Yes, basically. Yeah. Well, two fifty. Yes, we're adding it as a revenue, and then we're adding it. We're taking it out of as an expense. So re really, the nine ninety one is a wash. Yes, but that's a one time right, <coughs> revenue. And a one time expense. Yeah, that's why it's coming out right up, right off. Okay. It's just a wash. I have to list it, but it's really just coming in and out. Mm -hmm. Maria, the uh, 11.6 million that's on part of the education grant for the revenue side, uh, that 11.6 million, and then we're at 9.6. Is that? I'm sorry. Where are you? Where are you? On the revenue. On the revenue. Oh, yeah, yeah the that's revenue. the adequacy aid that the state gave us in, on November 15. They gave us the preliminary adequacy aid. Okay, so that's that's a a locked in number. We're not. It's it not. Is, an it is the preliminary. Okay. Yes. Is the preliminary a lot of number that came on the last that's, week? That's a two million dollar increase, and you know, we, we know that if anything less than every, every anything that we don't get in revenue is basically the inverse of that is added to the expense, which is our budget. So, dollar for dollar. Yeah. So. Is the Ed Grant um, kindergarten stuff? No. Where does that money come get calculated from, Chris? Do you know that revenue? The adequacy aid, you mean? No, the adequacy. Yeah, that's an education grant. Okay. Yeah, so the education grant is all in. Yeah, it, it has everything. Combined, and this year they had a, a relief, a, new, a one time, well, for next year, they have a one time release. Yeah, they re yes. uh, relief yeah. account. Yeah, it's a relief aid. Relief aid, okay. A, a little portion is a relief aid. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. When will we have an idea of what FY? Wait, so the eleven six six five is what we're expecting yes. next year. So the state last week on November fifteenth, they released the preliminary uh, allocations for each of the districts for adequacy aid, and ours came last week at eleven point six. Okay. <clears throat> And what this is showing is that the, uh, now we have to keep in mind that what was voted, what you have here, the 9.6 that was voted was again the preliminary, um, the preliminary adequacy that they had in November of the prior year. Right, right. right. So when they come in the in the spring in April, they come with the updated which amount, is lower. which it's is higher. High, this year actually was higher. It was 17.2. So if you take the 17.2 compared to the 16 <clears throat> to the 11, I'm sorry. I, I, I can I have here including the swept, so it's a little different. But it's a, about $700,000 difference. difference. But again, this is preliminary. So like it increased in April this year, we can increase. And every year we see that it increased. I don't. I, we're Going talking back. about the adequacy aid, right? Yes. <coughs> so that increased, but then then it decreased, and then they decided to redo the formula. Which, yes. Which ended up being an even bigger. So what increase. happens is in November they do a preliminary. Yeah. They allocate the resources that they have, and then when the feds come with additional allocation for the state, they recalculate the formula and they see what the needs are. Especially this last couple of years, because we have very little reduced free and reduced. That's what they, the biggest portion of this is the free and reduced, because we have served free meals to all the students. Parents are applying for free and reduced, so our numbers in all the state have decreased significantly. So what they have done these two year, these last two years, is they have make a, make it based on an average of 19, 20, and 21 free and reduced numbers to make it work for all the districts. So, so that's <coughs> why we're predicting such a large increase next year. Yeah, because they, well, they came up with the 11.6, which is 
an increase what they projected it back in November of 2022, which is what was voted as the revenue for 2020. And did, I'm sorry if you just answered. Did you just tell Sean that the, that the 991 is included in that 9.6 million for this voted year mm -hmm. for education grant? Uh, no, that is not because this is no. I actually I am not, and I apologize. I did not include it there. But that's where we go, yes? Yes, yes, I, I completely did not. I put it in the other sheet, but not on this one, yes. I should have had because that is voted. I apologize. Right. I did not. Okay. <clears throat> so that means this number should be taken care of. So I have a question on the, um, the revenue budget page. Mm-hmm. So at the very bottom, third, third row, up, it talks about the total income. Yes, that's... And I'm starting on the right, so I'm just looking over the years. It's going down by about $2 million a year, right, the revenue? Mm-hmm. But then it went up almost well, $1.7 million. Is that adequacy aid? So if you see, that, that $16 million is the sum of all the lines above? <clears throat> so that total yes. income is the is the sum of those lines above. So if you see from the 9.6 in adequacy, 81, a million is there. So a million of the two is there. Mm -hmm. That's one have, million. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm just Can looking between. Just, yeah, let me open the file here. Will be 22 sorry. and 23. Our income went up. I do the math right, somewhere around 1.7 million. And I got the million roughly as the Let me open additional the file adequacy. Down, so. I'm sorry, let me open the file. <laughs> it will be easier if I have it open. Because these are the numbers that I inherited. So. I can't talk to him. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> Here. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if that is a coded, a high coded number. Of course, I can open it. Yeah, it's only a million. Oh, it's two. Yeah, but it's a million. <coughs> it's not really because it's going from fifteen to sixteen seven, right? Right, from fifteen to sixteen seven, and the Ed so grant went from nine six to eleven six. So there's two million there. So that's your one one point. <coughs> but that total income's wrong on that page, though, because it doesn't have the nine ninety one three ninety three, right? Yeah. So <coughs> on twenty two. So these are two. Separate things. So it's going from 15 million to 16.7. The adequacy it is going from 9.6 to 11.6. So that's two million, two million more or less. If you take out the the other differences, the hundred thousand on the regular day tuition, and the I don't know the hundred, the ten thousand in the other local revenue. So that's your difference. Basically, is the the education grant because that's two million, right? From 9.6 to 11.6. So it's 1.7 increase, that's $2 million there, and then the $300,000 is within the, the reduction within the other lines, which is special education aid, um, the regular day tuition. My file is not opening. I don't know why my Excel doesn't work. <clears throat> yeah, I just... One point six million.
Sorry, my cat was not. There we go. Oh, there you go. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. While Maria is doing her magic over there, I just want to just talk to the, <clears throat> the fellow people on the committee here. So I'm looking at this revenue sheet. And at the very bottom, <clears throat> the second to last row says district assessment. I'm just starting on the right, and I'm reading to the left. You know, I'm starting at going back to 2020, then 21. But correct me if I'm wrong. So this is the burden that our four towns have to come up with through assessments. Yes. And so we're just watching that shift grow and grow and grow on our taxpayers. Yes. Just making sure we're all seeing. Yes. Yeah. Where, where they're I agree, I agree. That is that is correct. But we also have to <clears throat> take into account that the state awards um, funds based on the ADM numbers, which are two years back. Mm -hmm. So as the population <clears throat> of the, uh, you know, here in the school district has been going down, the state is going to be contributing less because it's on a per student basis. Yep. So just that loss in revenue right there will show that some of those numbers, the cause and effect relationship of that. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Is less, yeah. less contributed less, less and less. The state and less is contributing to each town less, and expected the taxpayer to pick up more and more of it. So right. for different things like retirement, you know, it's, well, it's like yeah. the perfect score. Yeah, no, well, that's that's another part of it. I mean, but just the dollar amount of that follows the the, the student contributes. If you want to look at it that way, since our vo our, our participation has been going down, the state is going to be awarding that. You know, based on that. In fact, several years ago, they actually accelerated that instead of doing two year look back right. with projections going down. They said, hey, if we just do it in the current year, we're going to save, you know, more. We're going to be going back, taking the uh, the newer data point than the previous one, and we're going to save a whole bunch of millions across the whole state because everybody's been going down. So that's why part of, if you look at the, the formula sheet that actually generates the disbursement and calculates mm -hmm. all the tax rates. There's actually now two parts of that because they used to be following each other. Everybody was the two-year look back. Well, our articles of agreement are, you know, set to the two-year look back, which the state was doing at that time. But when the state moved it forward, so you got the state using their award based on the current year and then the ADM that we use from two years back. So you want to talk about even making it more complex, that's part of it. But in the end, it all becomes each entity has their own special interest part of it. So... Um, Michael, I'm going to go down the list, giving you the variances, so you understand the $1.7 million variance. Okay. So on regular day tuition, we have a decrease of $100,000. Yep. Then on food service, we have a decrease of $7,500. We have an increase of other local revenue of $10,000. Yep. We have an increase of $2 million for the education grant. Yep. We have a decrease of 150000 for the special education aid. Mm -hmm. Then we have a decrease of 25000 in Medicaid. Right. If you add those up, it's $1.7 million. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Else have any questions for Maria? We could uh, go through the detail too if we want. Um, I mean, your summary pretty much pointed out a lot of the big hitters, right? Mm -hmm. Also, Michael, this is this what kind of what you wanted to see? This was. I think it's um, it's a good it's a good picture. Okay, and in the back, you, mm -hmm. you asked for the green portion of the price, so that's the explanation of that one. Do we know that the uh, GMR is going up 6.2%, or is that a guess? Well, that's, that's what the, what Health Trust gave us mm -hmm. as, the, as the GMR. Okay. Usually and historically, in January, in January or February, they come back with another number. Last year, it was 
increased too. So and they it came down they, to two point six. They predict much higher. Usually so <coughs> remember the year they'll say twenty. They said twenty yeah. percent. I nearly fell off my chair, and then it came in at only about nine. Mm -hmm. And on you know, thirteen, it came out at six. And so they're saying it's six. That's why I question six. That's six sixteen. Six. Yeah. Uh, 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 <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> They're not supposed to go higher than that, right? That's a guaranteed. So this guarantee maximum. They can't go up to ten. Nope. Mm -hmm. so they're tightening their belts. Wow, well, that. Mm -hmm. Not, they're not overshooting as much as they should have. Right. Actually, health trust does really well because they actually are. You know, I mean, they're sort of like a, I mean, a nonprofit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, we just I know at the town level, we just got back a reimbursement for health trust. So. Right. If they're giving back money back to. All the individuals it's because they don't have as many claims and so forth gotcha, and all gotcha. the good things that we want it's just right. that <clears throat> they need a certain reserve to, to run and there's you know to, to relook at that period so we <clears throat> we did get a reimbursement last year two or four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars and they are I heard they are saying we're gonna get another one this year but they don't tell you how much or they don't have any way to calculate it so I don't know what it's gonna be I I, I wish Sean, you had been here at the, <coughs> at the and you two, Mark, at the last meeting because I think the presenters who gave those budgets, Carl, the new um, principal at the high school, Sandy, Chris, they did, from every budget I've ever heard, the most outstanding, and I didn't hear, I haven't heard them all, but I've gone back and tried to listen, outstandingly detailed, reasonable budget numbers um, to this committee. I, I was very impressed with everybody's um, budgets. So I don't idea. think anybody here in this committee could say, you ask me for what? Like, you know, that kind of reaction you sometimes get, like a visceral kind of reaction. I, I, in all the presentations, and I've gone back and looked at some of the videotapes, I didn't hear anything that I thought stood out to me other than we're sending some of the kids out of district, which breaks my heart. But We're working on that. But I, thank you very much for that <coughs> comment. But beautifully done. And for some of you coming in as late as you did, after a while we're not going to give you that excuse <laughs> anymore, but I'll give it to you this budget season, a new principal at the high school, Good. beautifully John done. Yep. Um, Carl with the facilities. So He's meticulous. Meticulous, well thought through. I mean, was willing done to explain a, a slit cedar and a da-da-da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> you know, and not patronizing us or... Just really well done. I think what I would describe about Carl is he is doing a forensic audit in this district of all that has not been attended to. And he over hasn't the last seen it years. all. He and said, No, he hasn't. He said, uh, I can't even agree more with you on that, Todd. It's, it's good to see some, and I've made this at, even at school board meetings with Maria. It's really good to have people in these roles that I'm going to be just being blunt are competent in their role. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. If I can say something, I think we, and I think Chris can agree to this, I think we're taking a collective effort to be planners mm -hmm. rather than reactors. Yes. So we're planning, we're not reacting. We're planning to exactly to have, yeah, that, that helps on our to have a long-term plan to see what is the best option to execute things, we not being reactive. When you build on up and you, you can show the, the voters of how you're spending their money in a, in a frugal way, when you have to come back and ask them for something, they're more inclined to be understanding and see the, the story behind it. And that's all built up on trust that takes years to get and goes away just like that. Mm -hmm. So we always got to be cognizant of that. Yeah, and it's not saying that we did. We've had some very good people that worked for Timberlane in the past and in this SAU. Excellent people with long, long careers here. Um, but very impressed. Sometimes it takes a fresh perspective, you know? Um, like the grounds that he was talking about. I mean, I want, I want our grounds to look like Winnicott it, right? <laughs> I do too. And it's, it's also with that is is the ability to accept change yeah. and and looking through it through a different lens and saying hey, maybe it is to, to to look at it from a you know a different angle and see something a better solution. <clears throat> yeah, I think the fact that a lot of us are new 
it's you know it has taken a long time to learn we don't have the 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 history we don't have the institutional knowledge but we're finding different ways to navigate and different perspective of how where we want to go and how we want to get there so i think that has been helpful Maria, I'm seeing uh, repair and maintenance in the mm -hmm. Carl had some pretty big increases, and that's built into here then? Yes, so that, they are... Between that and building improvement? Mm -hmm. They are in different lines. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is because he has also in equipment. He has, you know, he asked for the it's truck the cedar, that yeah. he needs to change. He needs the cedar. Mm -hmm. So some of his lines are combined with other lines here in the summary. It's just hard to list everything separate to make it in a summary. <clears throat> and again, that 892 for building improvement is not inclusive of anything on the CIG yet. Right? Uh -huh. You mean some of the projects? Where are well, you? Well, it's not inclusive of the bulk of the year one CIP. Um, uh, mm, I don't services. think that's a straight, I don't think that's a true statement. Where are you? The 892-200 for the building improvement line. What page is this? Uh, second to last. No, that's the $991,000. No, I'm talking about 2023 requested, eight ninety two two hundred. No, that's the that's the capital, that's the $800,000 that we have in the capital fund every year. That's the forty the 4200 and the 4600 That's part of the million dollars that we have. It's about a million. Is that is that one and the 150 on the 4200 so we did talk about projects that are in, would be in That is for yeah. capital, yes. Whatever yeah. it was, was a big purchase, and so I said that wasn't on the CIP. Is this 150 under the 4,200, and the 800 and something under the, that's the million dollar that we have carried in the budget. So that 150 and this 900, that's the million that we have been carrying, that we have been building up in the budget to take care of capital right. improvement. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, that is the million dollars. Okay. That they yeah, so we're not ignoring the CIP. If you were asking about ignoring the CIP, I'm going to say no, they're well, not ignoring the CIP. I, I'm not saying ignoring, but we've got a million every year, uh -huh. and that's not enough to cover the year that's one right. of the CIP. No. So my point is we had to move it over it's and move really it over. taking a small piece of year that's one right in the priority and chipping away at it with a million a year yep. as opposed to what the real number is. It, which is to do it all for four I'm million. I'm not suggesting that, by the way, <laughs> because that's a massive amount of money uh, to request. Well, um, Paul but, would be happy if you gave him that much. I'm, I'm sure he would. School board would like that much. I'm sure he would. Because they're tired of talking about boilers and roofs and stuff too. But this year, if you look at Voted because of that extra 991, it was almost doubled. This year. Right, which is which that I just excuse the reality. I think. Well, what do you mean? I mean, they can spend the 1.8 right. this year, right? On, mm -hmm. And they could attack some of that CIP Absolutely. and probably are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. In this year. Yes. Before June 30th. Mm -hmm. And then we go back to the 900,000, which is what we have been carrying, the other million mm -hmm. between those two lines. So it's almost like you got an extra year in there. Yes. We got an extra, we'll say 980,000 no, 80, that we can spend from now till June. And then. No, you can spend it past June. We, we, oh, yeah, did, we, we made it yes, made one it, more year. It, yes, you just in case. That on. Because so you can la hold it over. And then you got. If we go with this budget, another million. Yeah. So that'll get us two, almost three million closer to the four million. Thought. Yes. Uh, for year eight. one. <laughs> for year one. Okay. Um, so I love the pie chart. Yeah. It definitely puts things in perspective. Um, So as far as tonight goes, this is the introduction to our proposed budget. Uh, 
Um, feel free to ask any more questions uh, if you have them. My suggestion is take these numbers, go back to your homes or your offices or whatever, take a hard look at it, and start looking for trends. I would assume Maria has maybe some spreadsheets that show trending similar to last yeah, year. Yeah, I can that she could share with. I mean, you could see the trend here, but yeah. Maria has <clears> had <throat> the ability in the past to go back even further. You know, it's you take the two years of COVID and that kind of skews things a bit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the hard part of trending right now because it's, I mean, it's it's not a real trend analysis. You can't really do a trend analysis with these two years because they're off and you know they are so you have to be careful on cutting things when you right. when you need them and this year is skewed too because we got that extra i hate to say extra because we deserve that money but <laughs> unexpected. unexpected yeah that's yeah, uh, easily illustrated by the added increase uh in revenue from the pack programs i mean that's like a 4x increase and i'm basically attributing it to the prior years were such a reduction due to COVID. That's why. But I just wanted to, you know, are those numbers sound and realistic? I would probably like to look at fiscal year 2019, what it was actually. <coughs> you know, that, then that would be a pretty good baseline. Right. There's so yeah. many variables that have been impacted yeah. that's right. from the pan, you know, that's right. by the pandemic and over that time, costs of, uh, you know, labor costs, materials costs, things like that for construction energy costs so many things have changed it's really hard to find any kind of a trend and say well you know and, and, and excuse any interruption and so say that doesn't go count back, Sean. Yes, well sean, go back just, sean just said no 2019 voted and expended is the last non-covid year yeah mm -hmm. that's why i left it in this report because yep. that's our last but now yep. this is almost this is going to be almost four years ago That's when the 2023 budget yeah. comes so it's so we don't have 2019 on the income statement we have right. 20 so that's what I, you know I, if for example if the 2019 actual income statement for count 52 23 the pack programs uh -huh. let's say 60,000 that's the nine the 77 5 is more realistic to me but all i have is 20 and 21's actual re revenue and those are like sub twenty thousand right. dollars so when you say 77 then how much realistic is that because like i says for every dollar that they don't hit at that 77.5 is basically a dollar moves to the yeah, expense side. <clears throat> yeah. well with the with the packies have fun so the packies have fun transfer so we have 77.5 in the revenue and we have 77.5 in the in the expenses they're not allowed to expand if they don't bring the revenue so it's a wash fund. It's like the food service. It fund. is, but you, what I think what Sean's talking about is more as a as an indicator of sort of COVID, non COVID, right? Like, yeah, the trend. Correct. Yeah. Like that's those one point of it. Reality of an empty pack and no shows. Correct. And are we going to see the seventy seven five hundred this year? I mean, we've been selling out. And I I, I do agree yeah. to the point that you're trying to make that that you know you, you can say. Um, if you don't have the people coming in, you're not going to have the expense. That is true, but mm -hmm. you are still allocating in the budget that for the 77.5 of income coming in there. So you're planning that. The budgets are reflected of that. That ain't going to change. If the revenue doesn't come, yeah, you would get that in a subsequent year for surplus, but it's a it's a pipeline effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so absolutely. you don't get your refund till next year. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah, with it. Yes. You're it's absolutely not, it's right. all in the same year taxation mm -hmm. even though it's a sound business practice that we're not going to spend it we see that immediately but as far as is where that source comes it's the pipeline effect yes you're absolutely right so i would encourage everyone to look at 2019 look beyond 2019 to 18 17 16 mm -hmm. but just keep in mind that we're still wearing masks and you know what i mean so there's there's still the potential that this year and 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 next year are going to be a, sort of a hybrid, right? Between like a, a regular year that was pre-COVID and right. and uh, and a COVID year where you know you see things like that where the pack was empty or expenses are up in some cases and and uh, revenues are, uh, are down or so um, it's topsy turvy, but uh, 
but we this is what we have to do. This is our job. Um, so we're gonna uh, after we convene tonight, we'll meet again on the ninth, and we can uh, put it up for discussion. Any thoughts anybody has on um, where you see some friends and and where we want to start trying to trim? I reckon I recommend too if you have the time to go back and look at the videos of the presentations done by the human beings in those in the, what I call stakeholders. They were beautifully presented. It help. It might answer questions to, that the numbers just don't answer. But listen to them. Listen to the principals what they presented, mm -hmm. and listen to the athletic director. Um, listen to the tech director. I agree. All right, any other questions on this for now? All right, next on the agenda, we have other business. Hey, and Maria, I think you wanted to bring something up tonight regarding the school board. Oh, yes. So the school board has uh, mentioned, and I don't know, Sean, if you want to bring it over, you, you haven't, so I, I reach out to Todd, because they said that the stipend for the school board members is low for the commitment, and I... I, I think we agree. I, I personally agree yes. that the stipend for the board members is low. So I actually put an increase for the stipend to make it from $1,000 to $1,500 for the eight members, and then from $1,500 to $2,000 for the chair. What so do you guys think of that? I don't know if you guys... I don't want to take any action on it tonight. We could discuss it, but if you want to come back on the on the ninth to increase that or decrease that. It's just a, it's something that I personally think they're putting in a lot of hours. I mean, there's a lot of turmoil going on. I'd love to hear what Sean th has to think to say about it, though. Put it in the Warren article and let the voters speak. That's, I agree with Sean. Is that right? Okay. Yep. I'm surprised you, you don't, don't get in these roles to do, to, to make money. If you do, you're, I'm going to say, Bluntly, you're an idiot. <laughs> but you, what you, you, I used to say that I, I'd be able to take my my uh, wife out to dinner for all the times that I would spend away, you know, for that on the town or on the school district or something like that. That's how I looked at it as you know and stuff. I didn't look at it personally as making money for it and stuff. You think the board wants to put it as a special article? Sean? I don't know where is they are nowadays. There's job. a lot of times I don't know where they are. Day-to-day? Day-to-day, day, um, but uh, that's a different topic. Can you do me a favor and ask them at the next school board meeting? Yeah. I will. Okay. Because I don't think it should be, I, my personal belief um, is it should not be rolled into the budget. It should be a special article or warrant. I know it's right. hard to believe I'd agree with Sean, but occasionally I do. <laughs> um, and he's right. I'm a locust. Huh? Yeah. I know. Where's the plague? <laughs> but, uh, okay. Okay. All right. What does any, anybody else have any thoughts on it? I think it's a good plan so far. Warren good article. Paper. Yeah, but, but, Could but it be retroactive so Mike Mescola gets what he deserves? <laughs> <laughs> it's a forty-eight hundred dollar increase if it, if that is the yeah. the new rate. Now, did you guys, the rest of you on the committee, know that Michael used to be on the school board as did Sue as well? Yeah. I think it should be retroactive, yeah. <laughs> at least back till I don't know two thousand fourteen or so. <laughs> Like well, if you, you want to amend the Warren article, Sue, by all means. Yes, you can add that. You can add that language <laughs> to the Warren article. If you're SAU chair, you get yeah. more money hmm. than just being school board chair. I mean, well, we could have some fun with that. Yeah. By the way, we're still being recorded. It's not just <laughs> I'm hardly worried about it. <laughs> all right. Any other business tonight? I, I, yes, sir. I have some. So if um, Sean has got, like, little action items to take back to the board... <clears throat> So I have two different topics. Um, so Maria, you were talking about this new administration is really trying to focus on um, planning versus being more reactive, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe somebody can speak to it either on this side or going back to the school board. <clears throat> so I see things like we got utilities, you budget up 10%, like 80 grand, right? Mm -hmm. And I keep watching over the years, um, I gotta be careful when I say this. Sometimes when people leave, they cash out with the, some of their benefits that are built into the contract. And um, is the school board looking at 
adjusting some of the contracts? I'm going to give you an example. All, all of them are being looked at. And, and that's not not the, the, quote, salary, but, for instance, uh, if... unfunded liabilities. Those that unfunded exist, liabilities. That we pay out of the operating budget. Exactly. Yes, that we, we, we those. should have those. Yes, we are We are trying to address just, that. I'm just going to explain it for the... Or maybe you want to explain it for the rest of the board, what these unfunded liabilities are. These unfunded liabilities, a part of it is sick days. sick days, all these things. And then when people, you know, retire, they cash all that stuff out. And there is no line item for this. What we do is yeah. we pay it out of the existing operating budget. And one is that's no way to, to run this because if, in theory, if everybody, Timberland ended and we had to pay out these liabilities. We have no money. It's a line. It should be a line item, like a liability on the board. It should books. be. A, it's a long-term liability that we have, and we don't fund it during the current year and put it in there, and we put like a trust fund in there and have it in there, so that when we write the sum of checks at the end of the year, to all those that are retiring. So for I, example, I guess what I'm just saying is, is the school board looking to make adjustments so we stay competitive in the industry? Um, and we don't give away the bank, but we also make sure we treat our employees fairly. It's both. It's a balance yes. of both. I mean, that's what contract negotiations are are going on right now. Okay. What are you thinking for that, Michael? Like, do you think we should have a, there should be a Warren article? Well, I'm not saying that. I just like want to make sure that um, the school board is at least in complete understanding that whatever that benefit is, if we let somebody accumulate X amount of stuff, these unfunded liabilities. Are tough and I, like I'm saying, I'm watching Maria say, "Oh, we're going to put eighty thousand on for our uh, for our utilities in case it goes up," which is fair. But I think we just saw a check go out in the last several years for about eighty grand to one individual. I'm going like one individual is all the utilities for the district and the increase. So can we just look at them to make sure that we are fair? That's all I want to say. Fair. Right. I don't want to strip people away from what they already have, but if we have a new person going into a position, maybe we start shifting into a new trend, not take away what somebody already has. This board is addressing that with the Thank contract you. negotiations. So that would be the first thing, and I have one different one. Okay. And I don't know much about it, and maybe Chris or somebody else can chip in. I'm hearing some talk about New Hampshire's voucher program. It's up at the, the house now. Is it? House Bill 607, and it's, I'm reading it, and it's got some huge liabilities that are going to be passed down to the towns. Are you familiar with this, Chris? A little bit. Actually, Maria might even know more of the detail on the financial end. Could you just... There are a couple of bills that have been out there. I'm just watching for the other people out there. Is yeah. The state was allocating X amount of money to a parent who wanted to homeschool. And they they allocated, was it 5,000 slots? And I think they're 500% over in their request of that 500. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, no, we don't have the money, we're like, you know, if I go get a rebate from Unitil, and they say, we're out of money, I don't get the rebate. And the state just said, sure. Um, and so <clears throat> that money has to come from somewhere. So, as stuff trickles down, <clears throat> we're going to get pegged. So, can you share with this board what you know about this? I, I don't know much other than what has been shared, and what has been shared is exactly what you just said, that the state has put this bill out to pay, to allow more people to take this benefit, or however you want to <clears throat> call it. So... <clears throat> what it what it is going to come down is going to come down to us. So it's going to be part of our adequacy aid that we will have to share with the families that want to homeschool. <clears throat> so we will have to give the co the price of having that child into our school system. We will have to pay pay that to the family. That's what the bill proposes. And I believe the number that they would give you know <clears throat> the the parents is about I think it's around five to seven thousand dollars per child is more than well it depends what what 
It depends if the child has special <coughs> needs, education needs or not. And it, it really, if they have free and reduced or not, it's, it just, the number can vary. So I was reading an article and basically it was painting a perfect storm disaster for all the communities in New Hampshire because as government passes the buck down, you know, we can't go into debt, we can't print money, we just have to raise more taxes. And that's why you were asking about the revenue trend. Yes? Yeah. Right. Right. Because just for that page alone, just go down to the bottom. Yeah. As that number uh, for total income goes down, the, one, the number below it means our taxes go up. Right. So, and so I'm just watching all these trends. That's why I asked Mr. O'Neill. Are you guys looking at these unfunded liabilities? I'm looking at House Bill 607 because everything is just a little bit here and there, but it's making that bottom line, that trend of what the assessment is for our district is just growing and growing and growing. And so I'm just saying, we just got to keep an eye on everything. Yep. And so can I ask that Mr. O'Neill, I don't know, maybe feeds this back to the school. Can you share something with us next time we meet? Meaning, mm -hmm. are you guys looking at it next year? All this. Um, well, in regards to this respective bill, though, I mean, that's. Not the bill. The, uh, you know, that uh, looking at contracts. Like, do you guys have it in oh, your radar? Oh, earlier point, yeah. Is, yeah. is it on your radar for, you know, this year? I guarantee you it's on the radar, and it is part of the contract negotiations that are in front of all in the lang In the language, right? In the language. Yeah. All okay. current contract negotiations. Correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah, all the current ones. Yeah, so to your point, yes. We could do all this talking, but I look, what are the assessment trends to the town? Because it's up to the four towns, all these residents and businesses that initially have to support this business. Yep. Right. The state's getting out of the business, and yes. we're picking up the business. More and more and more. A lot of to comment on your second part with the the whole funding of this, and this is going to get into some philosophical differences. Is sure. Where does who, who who the funds that are allocated to a student should follow the student? Some people believe that. Some you know believe right. it should just come here automatically. And what it does, at least from my viewpoint, it, it allows choice. I'm a big fan of choice. I'm a big fan of accountability. And what you what what that would mean is that Timberline is competing for those same <coughs> dollars that are going to other other students I mean excuse me other entities that could possibly go to we have to offer the best solution such that people want to come here and and if we just assume that we are the default we're going to get this all the time and with that attitude the quality goes down people are going to seek solutions elsewhere look at to your point you can drop a million scenarios you can take the poorer communities mm -hmm. are going to get poorer and the wealthier communities with uh, schools with better reputations are going to get richer. And so I think you're going to get a bigger separation. You have the potential of getting a bigger separation. That is a potential. Yeah. So, yes. Also a potential that public schools will start to look internalize and figure out what do we need to do to offer the best solution and get results that the community wants and desires. Probably invest in our schools. Like you're talking about mm -hmm. adding a trade school. How many new schools have trade things to over Summersworth, um, Pinkerton, right? So if we're not investing in our district, how are we going to make it better? We're going to have crumbling buildings are not really attracting the best of the best. Right. Right. Athletic fields that are terrible. Yeah. Or a, a track you can't have a track meet at. I mean, Less if my kid's a track star, I guess I'm going to send them Central Catholic, right? So um, I guess we know that what we need to do. But what we're talking about here are physical things, better buildings, those kind of things. The quality of the education is also the biggest metric, at least in my viewpoint. And I agree with you, Sean. I do agree. We need to attract. That twice now today. It's a remarkable day yeah. for me, too. Please record that. See? Um, my praise. <laughs> <power. laughs> now, that's worth putting in the notes. <laughs> yes. So much to be thankful for this week. I know. We need to have a reasonable. I might even have a second piece of pie. Contract <laughs> that that, um, attracts that values and attracts top 
educators and top special ed people and top paras and top, top, top. I want the very, nobody in here can say we don't want the top, well, the best we can possibly get. Second best. Right. That's what we're all here for. That's why right. we're here, whether we get a stipend or not. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, so maybe what I'll do is I'm going to reach out to our local state rep mm -hmm. so then can tell me who's on this subcommittee talking about House Bill 6 and 7. Maybe we can get a, one of our state reps oh, in here just to say, because this is a really big one. To come explain it to us. Sure. How is this going to affect our budget? No, we'll what we do. Very I'd love anybody that. I would love that. They could, they could be part of uh, a special guest. They could even maybe they could be our first delegation then have, individuals. We could have a delegation of individuals yeah, finally. That's right. For our that's state right. rep, yes. That's right. Uh, if you copy... Um, what is the email address for Budcom? Budcom, whatever. It could be okay, part of the correspondence as well. Budcom.com. <laughs> you could get the trifecta. That's right. All right. Uh, with that said, we will uh, see everybody here uh, December 9th, and I am going to adjourn the meeting at 8.14 p.m. All right. So thank you all very much, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.